Hi, I'm Ali Mohammadi. Welcome back. In last video, I talked about different sorts of data for reservoir characterization and geological modeling. So here's the question. When we have the data, how can we do this process? How can we characterize data and do geological modeling? First thing that you should be considered is geological surface. Look at the picture on the left side. It is simple reservoir. You can see the two impermeable cap rock as well. Well, there are geological surfaces for this reservoir. But the fact is that reservoir is not always that simple like this and has just only two geological surface. If the reservoir is so complex, such as the picture on the right side, uh, as you can see it has more than two geological surface, then some other geological surface must be defined. As an example, fast or permeability barrier can be considered as an additional geological surfaces. As you can see in this picture, there are some faults as well. We should know that the well log data and seismic data can also help us to map the geological surfaces. Structure modeling involves the design and definition of the geological features within geological model. It contains faults and other geological modeling. Something that you should pay attention is the impact of the faults on reservoir performance. So there may be some faults which does not have any contribution on reservoir performance and using them in structure modeling just bring too much complexity. Consequently, it will slow down our calculation. In order to avoid these situations, it is highly recommended that reservoir engineers and geologists should work closely together to do structure modeling in the best way possible. Next is stratigraphic modeling. But first, what is stratigraphy anyway? Stratigraphic is defined as the structure of the particular set of strata. It means defining the structure of series of layers. The structure can be defined into different geological zones. Geologic zones also subdivided further into geological layers, either to present flow units or phases. Well, log data along with Petrophysical models are used to generate rock properties such as porosity, permeability, water saturation, formation thickness, and etc. They may also be used to define flow units. The processed well lake data can be loaded into geological models. Now, simply we need to input property data such as the porosity, permeability into our model. It can be done by simply assignment of these properties to the grid blocks or more sophisticated methods based on geostatistics can be used. Property data modeling must be done with collaboration of the reservoir engineers and geoscientists. When the geological model is created, there may be some error inside it. This is quite natural, since true sample values might be different. The more error, the more uncertainty the model has. Consider the amount of the sample data available is sparse, so the level of uncertainty is high. And if the amount of the sample available is large and well distributed across the volume of interest, the level of the uncertainty would be less. Two main sources of the uncertainty belong to the structural uncertainties, which is the result of the processing and interpretation of the seismic data, mapping faults, and so on. And the other source is petrophysical uncertainties, may result from the measurement of the porosity, permeability, etc. So now we should measure the level of uncertainty. How can we do this? We can do it by generation of the sum equal model, which are different in uncertainties. In other words, all the possibilities for that uncertainty is considered. And by knowledge of statistical analysis, different uncertainties can be assessed. Now let's talk about the final step in this procedure. In the last step, geological model should be upscaled. The objective of the upscaling process is to reduce the number of grid blocks in geological model and still keep the important characteristic of the geological model. So what does it exactly mean? Well, geological model, as you know, is so complex and in some cases it is too large. Using directly the geological model in the simulation as a reservoir model may need lots of time. In addition, computer memory storage is so limited. And finally, the cost of processing the output from large models are quite high. All of these reasons force us to think about upscaling. Nevertheless, in the recent years, the computer technology has improved a lot. 
so it is expected that by passing time there may be less need for upscaling and maybe one day geological model can be directly loaded for simulation at the reservoir model. In this video, we have learned about the procedure for geological modeling and reservoir characterization. Now here's the question. We talked about the important geological model at the reservoir, but what is the reservoir definition and how we can estimate the reservoir volume? These are the topics of the next video.